Hi, Pablo. Hi. Thanks for having us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Wow. This is your well, studio. This is studio. <laughs> How are you doing? What have you been working on? Yeah. Um, well, um, I do a lot of um, many short-term projects. Uh, I am maybe too curious and like too all over the place all the time, like always doing small things. But I do, uh, do also um, commit to a number of long-term projects that I've been doing for many, many years. So I thought I could tell you a little bit about those. Absolutely. Today. Yeah. Yeah. And these are projects that perhaps I am mostly more associated with. And that also, in a way, um, are informed by my, my background, my uh, experiences working in, in the art world. Right, yeah. And uh, specifically in my work as a museum educator, which is something that I did for many, many years. Mm. So um, the, the things I thought I would, I would show you was um, yeah the comics you're... first the, these things that, that are yeah. that have been termed cartoons <laughs> cartoons yeah um, and the um, the background of these pieces is that I uh, I've always been a cartoonist you know secretly mm. uh, since I was a kid you know um, and um, but when I started going into the into the visual arts I was uh, I realized that. Or I felt that artists should be serious, and like making cartoons was not like considered serious yeah. or acceptable, right? Yeah. Uh, and it was not until in 2008 when I joined Facebook that uh, I didn't know what pictures to put in there, and I decided to make a cartoon uh, using the New Yorker format, yeah. which is the caption and image, right? Yes. It's yeah. called single panel cartoons, mm -hmm. uh, and so it was popular, and people started like asking for more and. Um, <laughs> and more and more and then and then of course I, I, I have never had a problem making cartoons mm. you know it's like they come really almost immediately <laughs> <laughs> it's so like a I, quick joke yeah and, and um, yeah. The, the thing about cartoons is like I, the um, you have to think about something that it, that really goes beyond the one liner I mean there's it, yeah. I think a humor um, good humor it has to go beyond the one liner it's not just like a joke but it has to make you think about something you know? Yeah, true. And the truth is that as an educator over the years, I have uh, been, you're trained to really look at people and, and be attentive to what's happening in the uh, course of a conversation of interactions with people. Mm. And uh, so many things emerge. You start paying attention to body language, you pay attention to, um, to people's um, reactions or attitudes toward art and toward each other. Right. And also, you become very keenly aware of uh, issues like social hierarchies, yeah. or or language, or the way that people express uh, displeasure or criticism, or, so, or like passive aggressive behavior. Yeah. Uh, so I thought it would be all this stuff, you know, which is if you have lived in, or existed in the art world for enough years, you would know that this awkwardness completely yes. permeates everything. Yeah. yeah. In the art world gallery scene, in, uh, in the academic scene, the museum world, in the in our criticism everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so the, the cartoons became kind of like these pieces of observation of things that I was like experiencing, the, the things that I feel we all have experienced, you know? Mm. Uh, and um, it also, in, in a way, it's a form of therapy, you know? Sure, yeah. And, um, and I felt, I realized that, that the kind of provided certain release and was cathartic for some people. Yeah. And before I also knew it, it was it was interesting, um, I started seeing that it was happening internationally, not just in the United States. Like I started getting emails from people from places like Egypt and and like uh, Europe and Asia and, and uh, Latin America saying, oh your are really popular here. And even even a uh, wow. uh, uh, an artist from Ramallah who held this time he said like, well we love your cartoons and <laughs> and I was like, well, but it's, these are very New York centric. Okay? So, like, it's like about you know, New York calories and things like that. So, yeah. Another word, you know, we have, like we also have very arrogant curators here. And, oh. In other words, like the art world is a society that replicates itself. Yeah. Everywhere, you know, yeah. it's not a New York phenomenon. You know, perhaps in New York you see it in a more perhaps uh, concentrated, concentrated, yeah. or or um, you know, visible. Yeah. It's, it's so. So big here, 
but it's true that it also operates in other places very similarly. In any way, so I, the, the cartoons have uh, had a life of its own, and um, and uh, and now I think for for the age of social media, they have uh, adapted themselves very well because mm. when you are scrolling through images, and you, you take a look at an image that just just takes you like three seconds to look at it, right? Yeah, and then. To the next thing, so these these things are are immediate. You know, you see and you see the you, you see the caption, yeah, and then that's it. You know? Sure. Yeah. So I think that's one of the reasons why I think in, in this particular era the artists have worked, and and it's just my own way to really just think about about the the, the life I'm living in the art world, you know. Yeah. And also to use humor, which is sometimes self-deprecating or critical. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it becomes a little ironic or sarcasm. Um, to also um, deal with the challenges we face with being an artist, you know, and uh, and the pressures that we encounter as we try to find support for the work that we do. No, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, so that's, those are the the art tunes. Are you still making these? Uh, I'm, I make them, uh, yes, every week or so. I mean, I, I make them for various publications. Right. Um, and the way it works is, um, it's, a, it's a very journalistic process, basically. Publications come to me and say, well, we're gonna run stories on these topics. And they always kind of like give me a list, and then I take a look at the list and see what might be funny, or what I can extract that can be funny right. from it. And then I, I, uh, I think about it for you know, a couple hours, and I write ideas, and then something comes out. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so it's, it's more of a Process, yeah. so are these more recent or uh, um, more from the archive? They are, they are from various times. Right. You know? I mean, yeah. I, they. Um, I I forget the dates when I make them, <laughs> <laughs> so I have to go back yeah. and then take a look at what they what they. It's not that I don't sign them, which is really embarrassing. And then, <laughs> like this one's from twenty seventeen. So, oh, cool. yeah. but but I yeah sometimes I forget to, to put them the, the a date. date. That's a problem because I have to track them. <laughs> So anyway, that's in terms of the art terms. Right. And speaking of like a long-term project. Yeah. This... So speaking of long-term long projects, this is the other long-term project. Um, and it also interestingly connects to my work as an educator as well. Mm. Um, so around 2006 or sort of 14, 15 years ago, um, I was broke. <laughs> and uh, and I, it was the holidays, and I needed to make presents for people. You know? mm, yeah. And um, and then I thought, well, maybe I can make some collages because I had recently been to a show and I'd seen a seen a collage, and I had thought to myself, this collage is really bad. Yeah. And I, I can do better than that. <laughs> it's so interesting how inspiring bad art can be. Sure. Yeah. If you can make it better. <laughs> yes. It, that's, uh, and I thought, like, well, you know, if, if the bar is that low, well, I can certainly. Like, a little bit younger than Pogar. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought, well, I'm going to try collages. And it felt like a, like a quick, cheap, and, uh, and, um, and compelling method, you know, yeah. of, of working. Um, and uh, I love used bookstores. I went to a used bookstore in Chicago, where I started making these. I was visiting Chicago with my family there. And um, I found three or four books that were more like instructional books. Uh, mm. I'm very interested in old-fashioned instructional manuals mm. of gymnastics, uh, of nursing, of anatomy, or, as I, uh, or math and physics. You know, I was a really bad student. Um, I flunked every science class. <laughs> but I remember being like long nights like looking at these uh, textbooks and trying to understand equations and yeah. like. And, being fascinated by the images, but not really getting what the hell was. Yeah. So I, I became really interested in the subject of explanation, you know, uh, as an educator, of course, that, that, that is interesting to me. Uh, and the, the idea that the illustration helps to function as some kind of aid at, at mo showing you what something is, you know. Mm. Um, I'm also um, interested in titles. Um, and um, 
and I think uh, that maybe connects to my interest in poetry and literature in general. Yeah. You know, and the way that you title a piece. You know? Yeah. Um, um, I'm interested in conceptual poetry and, and like uh, and uh, the way in which conceptual poets uh, borrow or, or take mm. uh, appropriate texts to to make their work. So all this kind of um, comes together in this particular series. Um, so I started making those collages and I became obsessed with the process, you know? Uh -huh. um, it becomes a very meditative process. Yeah. I always do make them at night mm. uh, when I'm in silence. It's a very kind of personal, intimate process of working. And, um, and it also, in a way, becomes like a diary. Because I, yeah. I basically try to explain something that I'm thinking about, something that, I'm, that I experienced, uh, something that happened. Uh, but using other words by others, not, mm. not using my own words. Mm. So, um, so, and, and they, the, the text in the collages are almost untraceable to the original source. Right. I mean, you, yeah. can, you can more or less imagine what I'm talking about, you know? Yeah. Uh, or, I mean, like, um, you, you know, uh, Binary signaling, <laughs> yeah, speech coding. Like yeah. you, you can tell, I was actually one of my domains I was working on had to do with communication theory. Mm, was, you know, right, right. Um, and they sort of bear like a similar format with like an imagery and then a, a caption sort of in the end yeah, and so then the title on top. Interesting. Yeah. Like the cartoons, they also have a caption. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm interested in the relationship between uh, title, caption, and image. You know? Oh yeah, and like yeah. It, it's like doing a little composition where the three things are kind of in dialogue or in tension with one another. You know? Yeah. Uh, so I never, I never use a, this a title from the same book from the same caption, or mm. very very rarely. Mm. You know? And as you can see, they, they go from very kind of abstract um, titles to basically things like using a pet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, wow! And how many have you made? So, so been... when I started making them, I thought I would just make like ten. You know? <laughs> but then I got obsessed, and then I just could not stop myself. It became like a drug, like a, like an addiction. Yeah. Um, but it also became this very soothing activity that um, that allows me to decompress at the end of the night, the mm. day at night. Mm -hmm. And um, I started making uh, dozens, and then hundreds, and then thousands. And uh, I have now made close to fourteen thousand of these pieces. Wow! Um, wow! And, and I, I'm imagining that um, by the end of this decade, <laughs> 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 I, may, I may make it to a hundred thousand. Who knows? Who knows? Wow! Um, yeah. But um, the objective of this project is also to um, to exhibit everything together. Oh, you right. Know, so you never exhibited. Shown no, them not, before. Not separate. I mean, right. I, some of them have been seen in, in separate moments, but my right. goal is to really show the entire suite. Yeah. In, 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 I, I often think about um, uh, about um, a movie called Cinecto in New York with mm. Philip Seymour Hoffman. It's, it's about a project of, of uh, like a theater director who makes this play that is like a with a crazy stage that's kind of like the stage of his life. It's mm. kind of like an autobiographical play. Right. And he keeps building and building and building and building this oh. set, which just becomes like practically infinite, you know? And it just never ends. It just continues growing and growing. Wow. Um, and it's kind of like this to me. It's, like, it's almost like, it's like a building a set. Uh -huh. that, that is also uh, a very strong, um, this, um, let's say, um, narrative of my own life. Yeah. And so it's, it's essentially an autobiographical project. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't really need me in any way. You know, like these, these things kind of exist on their own. Sure. And yeah. my life experiences don't really matter. Uh -huh. You know, to understand the thing. You know, like I'm, I'm not relevant. Yeah. That yeah. Sense. It was almost like the the durational encore, or the the each date. The, yeah. Like yeah. So so like encore, war, I'm very yeah. drawn to. Like a ritualistic process. Yeah. Like this idea that you know, like I mean, every every. Um, oh, this you've dated <laughs> everything. I, I yeah. tend to, I tend to also uh, date the place where I make them. Ah, yeah. like here you see, for example, this Arlington Heights, Illinois. Uh, this is my mom, where my mom lives. She's in the suburbs of Chicago. Ah. 
And because I started making them in that place, this became known as the Arlington Heights Suite. Um, so the project continues, and I, again, it's it's something that I have no idea when I will stop <laughs> making them. You never know. Yeah. But I, it's not a question that I'm interested in. Hey. Yeah. With, you know. I mean, <laughs> one day maybe I'll wake up and think I'm done with maybe this. Maybe it's thing. done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that day has not come yet. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, I'll continue making them. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Have you got any uh, upcoming shows or? Yeah, so there's there's an exhibition that I'm, that I'm working on that will be over here, here in New York at the, at the Shirley Fetterman Art Center mm. on, on October 15th. Mm. Uh, and it's a show that will include a performance component. So people can come and attend performance, and a set of performances there. Uh -huh. So uh, perhaps we can later send links to people. Yeah, to we'll put it in the, we'll put it in the caption mm -hmm. for us to go there but yeah we're looking forward to to going there and uh thank you for your time again thank yeah. you so much yeah